George Orwell was an early 20th century writer, best known as the author of Animal Farm in 1984. He also wrote essays, novels, and nonfiction books. While not trained as a philosopher, Orwell's writings include many philosophical claims. His philosophical insights are relevant to both pressing social issues and recent developments in philosophy. This video discusses some of his philosophical views in political philosophy, epistemology, and philosophy of language. Section 1. Orwell's Biography Orwell was born in colonial India, where his father worked for the British Civil Service. Orwell was raised in England as part of the middle class. After completing school, he worked for five years with the Imperial Police in Burma. During this time, Orwell became an anti-imperialist. After resigning from the Imperial Police, Orwell returned to England to become a writer. His writing often reflected his personal experiences, which included living among the poor in Paris and London, researching working conditions in Northern England, fighting as a volunteer soldier in the Spanish Civil War, and creating World War II propaganda for the British Broadcasting Company. Orwell published Animal Farm in 1945. It was a commercial success in the United States and the United Kingdom. 1984, published in 1949, was an even bigger success. Orwell <coughs> died of tuberculosis less than a year after 1984 was published. Section 2, Political Philosophy. Orwell's early writing focused on the themes of poverty and imperialism. He claimed that upper and middle class people typically misunderstood why people lived in poverty and what living in poverty was like. Orwell argued that poor people were not poor because of inferior moral character, but because of dysfunctional social and political systems that created unjust inequality. Orwell came to hate imperialism. He thought that both the oppressed and the oppressors were unfree under imperialism. The oppressed, because foreign imperialist invaders subjected them to injustice the oppressors because they were pressured into acting unjustly for the sake of keeping up appearances. Such oppressors also faced social pressure to censor themselves by not criticizing an imperial political structure that benefited their social group. Orwell's later writings focused on the themes of socialism and totalitarianism, among others. He rejected capitalism in favor of socialism. For Orwell, a socialist government was one in which major industries were nationalized, income inequality was limited, and quality education was available to all, regardless of social class. Importantly, Orwell distinguished socialism from Marxism and Soviet communism. He noticed how these things were sometimes inaccurately conflated with socialism. Orwell often specified that he was a democratic socialist, committed to a socialist society that preserved people's freedom and autonomy. Orwell was staunchly opposed to totalitarianism. He viewed totalitarianism as a specific kind of dictatorship that had not existed prior to the 20th century. For Orwell, totalitarianism was characterized by an unbounded desire for complete control and power for power's sake. Orwell saw this desire for power and control as incompatible with a just legal system that applies to everyone and thus limits even a ruler's power. But totalitarians will not tolerate limits on their power. Orwell viewed both Nazi Germany and Soviet communism as totalitarian states. Section 3. Epistemology For Orwell, totalitarian rule had epistemic consequences. Because totalitarian rulers need total control, they cannot tolerate facts that conflict with their goals. As a result, totalitarians will say whatever is necessary to retain power and will seek to convince people to give up on the concept of objective truth. Orwell used the primary antagonist in 1984, O'Brien, to model how the totalitarian desire for control leads the totalitarian to try to subvert truth. Totalitarianism was not the only political threat to truth that Orwell worried about. Orwell also viewed what he called nationalism as a threat to truth and to the formation of justified beliefs. Orwell used nationalism as a technical term to refer to the practice of making the advancement of a nation or other political unit one's central concern. Nationalists are fiercely loyal to their political teams and tend to view everything in terms of competitive prestige. Orwell's description of nationalism is similar to many contemporary descriptions of today's political left and right in the United States and many European nations. Nationalism for Orwell 
comes in positive and negative forms. The positive nationalist focuses on promoting one's own political team. Negative nationalism focuses on denigrating a political team to which one is opposed. The epistemic significance of nationalism on Orwell's account is that such political loyalty leads nationalists to distort their evidence, often unconsciously, in order to retain the belief that their political team is superior even when the facts are overwhelmingly against such a view. Orwell's insight can be expressed in modern terms as making a case for the view that political partisanship leads to cognitive bias and vice versa. Section 4, Language and Literature. Orwell believed that the development of politics, thought, and language were all interconnected. Because language influences our thoughts and our politics, Orwell thought it was important to write well. Orwell's desire to avoid bad writing is not the desire to defend standard English or rigid rules of grammar. Rather, Orwell's chief goal is for language users to aspire to let the meaning choose Choose the word and not the other way about. For example, Orwell thought we tend to pick the metaphors that first come to mind, but that these metaphors often distort our ideas in unproductive ways. This is what led Orwell to work toward developing an art of political writing. Orwell believed that, in some sense, all writing is political and that all art is propaganda because all writing conveys a political message, even if that message is just support for the status quo. As a result, Orwell viewed literature as a potential weapon against totalitarianism. Section five, conclusion. Political epistemology and political philosophy of language have only recently begun to emerge as distinct subfields within academic philosophy. In this way, Orwell's insights about the relationship between politics, thought, and language were far ahead of their time and are well worth philosophical examination.